name? Friends and neighbors? Or shall I say this afternoon? Hello and welcome back to MLB The Show. It is the Pirates franchise and I am your host, longtime listener. Be sure to drop a like, hit the subscribe button, and comment below. Uh, before we jump into action, um, I've actually proposed a trade here that the Marlins are interested in and I think is going to help this team in terms of our playoff push this season. So we are going to offer up Luis Ortiz. This is a 24-year-old. He's C potential, and he's a 67 overall, which isn't bad for a 24-year-old. But I would see this guy as like a career long reliever type guy at best because his walks per nine are not very good. So I, you know, even though he's got pretty good stuff, that command I think is going to be an issue for him. He's only pitched in a few games in the majors. And then his AAA stats this year are not the greatest, and it's the whip. 1.53, and part of that is because he's walking, you know, more than a batter per game, or per, more than a batter every other inning, uh, which is just not a good mix. Also, we are offering Leover Piguero. Now, I only have five shortstops on the roster, and one of them is Jihuan Bay. He was injured. So we'll have to make a little bit of an adjustment there. But this guy has a little bit of upside. He's only 22 and he's a B potential. But he's more of like a, um, you know, a plus defender and doesn't offer much in terms of offense. You look at his AAA stats this year, hitting just 231 with a 652 OPS. Not a ton of speed either with just eight stolen bases. And I just don't think he's ever going to be much of an offensive threat. So for that reason, I'm kind of okay moving on from him, especially when we are loaded with options at second base. Like Castro and Marcano are doing just fine right now. Tamar Johnson is only 18, and he's already a 68 overall and probably a better hitter already than Paguero, even though he's probably going to remain a second baseman. Um, that's the answer up the middle to compliment O'Neill Cruz before too long. And he's already up at AAA and actually swinging the bat pretty well there since we called him up. So he is only a couple of years away from being our everyday starter at second. And then what else I can do here is I can take Nick Gonzalez and move him to shortstop as his everyday position. And he'll be our starter at short at triple a and he's actually been hitting the ball okay at triple a in 39 games this year ops is 746 uh doesn't have you know the stolen base ability but he's actually not that bad in terms of his ratings there the defense is okay and i think he's a better hitter than paguero so basically the same player just a year older um and a little bit more polished offensively so I think we're okay to move those two guys because, like I said, Ortiz is probably not a huge asset for us in the long run anyway. And then what we get back is A.J. Puck. Now this guy, I love his attributes. The walks per nine are salt. Like all of his like per nines are pretty darn good, and his clutch is actually not that bad either. He throws gas. I like the four-pitch mix that he brings with fastball, slider, sinker, change. Um... And then his stats this year have actually been very good. A 1.21 whip, 2.65 ERA. And, you know, really over the last couple years, he has been one of the best left-handed relievers in the game. He's only 27 years old. And he is also a B potential. So he should continue to improve for the next couple of years. Uh, so let's go ahead and execute this trade. And then I'll talk a little bit more about... Uh, what kind of drove that. Like, if we look at the standings, we're four games back in the Central, so we're not out of that race. Uh, but things are really tight here, and we needed to get aggressive, I feel like, to make this move. The Marlins are four games back from the final wild card spot, and then in their division, they're 15 and a half out. So hope in that regard is completely lost. And they're probably realizing that they're just not really a legitimate contender. And I felt like they would be open 
to an offer like that that would maybe help them in the long term. So they're getting two pretty decent pieces that are young and can help them uh, over the next several years. So the only other thing that we're going to do here is come in and just make the adjustment to make short Nick, uh, the, the primary position for Nick Gonzalez. Nothing else changes. That's just really so on my depth chart. We don't have such a glaring issue there. Um, now, they put AJ Puck on the 40 man or on the uh, MLB roster, which is fine. The reason I really wanted to do that is like if we look at our left handed relievers, I know I've kind of talked about this. The guys that we have are doing okay, but really, whips are a concern. Our best is Jalen Beeks, and his whip is 1.65. That is not very good. Uh, then you have Garcia, whose whip is over 2. Even though his ERA is just 4.18. That whip is atrocious. And then on Hel Perdomo, the whip is actually, you know, not completely terrible, but he's the worst overall in terms of his actual overall. Um, Garcia is going to be the odd man out here. He's 30 years old and just really hasn't done much, you know, for us this year. So he is going to go down to AAA. And then we need to actually bring somebody up uh, as far as middle relief to or um, middle infield to fill the void where uh, who just left uh, Paguero so we're gonna go like that right there and that should solve that problem now we'll probably need to mess with lineups a little bit here so let's go ahead and take care of that so we need Shortstop is going to be Nick Gonzalez, and I want him to be the everyday starter here. Let's make sure that Johnson is... I don't know if it has any impact on morale if you don't have them starting on the days where it's supposed to be no DH or whatever. So maybe start paying attention to that just in case that's still a factor. All right, and then at double A, this really doesn't matter too much, but I guess Jackson Glenn kind of has to be this guy, and he is not very good. He's only hitting 219 for us. That's why he was sent down to single A in the first place, but it's not a big deal. It's just double A. All right, so that's that, and now we're ready for action. It's uh, the cross-state rivalry here with the Phillies and the uh, Pirates. And let's go out to uh, PNC and see if we can pick up a win as the series is tied at one apiece. And here we are with a look at the Roberto Clemente Bridge out there across the river as it's the Pirates at 53 and 51 hosting the Phillies. It's Evan Milton going to the mound as they look to try and take game three of this series and keep their playoff hopes alive as they are four games back in the NL Central, but right there in the thick of things for the wild card, as you see the results so far in the series, as the Pirates took game one in a 6 nothing shutout, but dropped game two by a score of 5-3. to three. It'll be Evan Milton going to the mound for the Pirates in this one, and we'll take a look at his numbers so far this season. He has been outstanding. 18 wins already, and we are not even out of July yet. A 1.98 ERA, a .94 whip, and 186 strikeouts across 163.2 innings of work. Turner takes back-to-back -back fastballs in for strike two now, and it's 0-2. And, and now chases one in the dirt, gets away from Rodriguez. He's going to have to hurry here as Turner runs well, but he sends it down to first to get him, and that's a good start for Milton as he strikes him out on just three pitches. 0-2 curve in the dirt. Jay Hay lays off, and it's 1-2. and two. Now he goes with the fastball up and in and jammed them. Popped up in foul territory. Choi has it, and that's two down. And let's get a look at the Phillies lineup in this one. We saw Turner and Harrison already, and there's Bryce Harper having an outstanding season, hitting 353. Schwarber in the four hole, dropping Schwarber bombs, then Real Muto. Nick Castellanos struggling over his last 10 games, hitting just 200 over that stretch. And then we've got six or uh, seven, eight, nine 
I think it was Hoskins followed by I don't know and doesn't matter as that's the eight and nine hole. We probably won't have too much trouble from them today, right? Harper helps him there, chases the three one changeup that was down out of the zone, fouls it off and the count runs full. Payoff pitch is a hanging curve and this one's hit deep to center field. Way back there, it is gonna hit the bottom of the wall and that's gonna be a stand up double for Harper. A mistake pitch there by Milton. As for, that one was just, you know, center cut, hanging and lucky that one stays in the yard. He finds the gap perfectly as they had the shift on, but uh, thankfully for the Pirates, it stays in the yard for a two out double. Got Schwarber to go off the plate away there, fouls it off and it's 0-2. Swing and a miss on a change up to end the inning and strand that runner at second. So the Pirates will come to the bat in the bottom of the first with a chance to take the lead as Milton holds them scoreless. And we'll get a look at the numbers for Aaron Nola who goes to the hill for Philly in this one. Making his 22nd start of the year, he's 9-3, a 2.89 ERA, a whip at just 1.01. Not getting a ton of strikeouts at just 114 across 143 innings, but this guy certainly knows how to pitch. 2-2 two -two as that curve misses down and in, and pitch number six is on the way and lifted into center field. This has a chance to get down, but is going to hang up and be caught for the first out of the inning. And let's get a look at the Pirates lineup as it's Cruz, then Hayes hitting just 228. Reynolds finally has that batting average up over 250. Milton in the four hole, then Sawinski, G Man Choi, Connor Joe, Marcano, and Andy Rodriguez to bat ninth. 0 and 2 to Hayes, and it seems like he is just always behind in the count this season. And he chases a fastball up out of the zone and is down on three pitches as his con you know, struggles continue at the plate. Reynolds just out front of that one, pulls it foul. The count stays 0-2. Now he gets a curve to hit and laces one into right field that's going to get down for the first hit of the ball game for the Pirates. So it's a two-out single, and that's going to bring Evan Milton to the plate with a runner on. He's got the average at 310 on the season and takes a fastball off the plate away and it's quickly one and oh Reynolds has pretty good speed but with two outs and Milton at the plate not likely to see him go that one nowhere close and now it's two and oh dangerous pitch coming here Milton's got some power so you got to be a little bit careful right here they go fastball at the belt. He gets under it. That one is going to hang up and is caught on the run. Long way to go for Schwarber, but he just barely got there, and that'll end the inning. We go to the second. We're still scoreless. That's a great take by JT as the count now full, and the payoff pitch is on the way. He goes to the fastball. This one is lifted deep to left field. Sawinski on the run, and he turns and makes the catch just shy of the warning track for the first out of the inning. Fouls that one off. It's now 0-2 to Castellanos. And he chases a curve in the dirt. He's going down on strikes as Rodriguez sends that one down to Choi for the second out of the inning. Good take from Hoskins. He lays off the curve down and away, and that makes it 1-2. and two. Milton goes to the fastball up and in and just blew it by him to end the inning. Another strikeout for the righty, and we're going to the bottom of the second with still no score. That fastball catches the top of the zone, and it's now 0-1 to Choi. And that ball hit hard. Diving try at first, but it's past him and into right field for a one-out single. That sinker catches the bottom of the zone, and it's 0-1 to Connor Joe. Now, now it's a curve that is left over the middle of the plate. That ball hit very well and gets all the way to the wall. Choi is going to come around and he will hold it third. It's going to be a one out double from Connor Joe to make it second and third. And a big opportunity here for the Pirates. Change up in there and makes it one and one now to Marcano. Wind up in the pitch. Grounded to the right side. This ball stays fair. Hoskins will take it to the bag for one, but a run comes in to score and the Pirates are on the board. It's now one nothing Pittsburgh. It's a great take by Mar uh, Rodriguez to lay off, and it makes it one and two now to the Pirates' backstop. But he chases that one in the dirt. Uh, it's blocked by Real Muto, sends it down to first, and that's going to end the inning. But the Pirates do get one. The RBI fielder's choice for Marcano makes it one nothing as we head to the third.
Milton gets the call on the corner to make it now one and two to Yastrzemski. Winds and fires. That ball grounded to the right side. Should be pretty routine for Marcano, and that's going to be the first out of the inning. Fastball got the outside corner, and that runs the count full. It's three and two, and the payoff pitch is swung on and missed. He went out of the zone there, chasing the curve, and is down on strikes for out number two. Turner struck out in the first, now behind in the count, 0 and 1. And gets a hanging slider. This ball is crushed deep to left field, and this one is going to be out of here. A solo shot for Trey Turner. A huge mistake in location there by Milton, as that one just nowhere near where he wanted it. On an 0-1 pitch, he leaves a slider belt high right down the middle, and Turner gets every stitch of that one. Milton goes back to the slider there, but that one down and away, and Harrison able to lay off to get it to one and two. Then he goes to the fastball and another mistake in location. This one is deep, and this one is way out of here. Back-to-back -back jacks for the Phillies, and they grab a 2-1 to lead on the second home run of the year for Josh Harrison. And Milton's got to be kicking himself, as that's two batters in a row where he just leaves a pitch right down the middle, and he has paid the price both times. Now it's Bryce Harper, so nothing gets easier here. That one, another mistake, and just ripped up the middle. He's lucky that one's coming back, and it's three straight times in a row now that Milton has just made mistake pitches over the heart of the plate, and the Pirates are going to go talk to him here and try and calm him down. So after the mound visit, it's Kyle Schwarber to stand in here, runner on, two down in the inning. That one... Much better location as it's chopped in front of the plate on the first pitch of the at-bat, and Schwarber is retired to end the inning. But the Phillies do get a couple. They grab the lead thanks to the back-to-back -back homers from Turner and Harrison, and it's 2-1 to one as we head to the bottom of the third. Cruz fouls that one off, and it's now 2-2. Two and two. The wind up and the pitch is hit hard back up the middle. Diving try by Turner. He knocks it down but is not going to have a play. It's an infield single for Cruz, and he is swinging the bat well as he's now 7 for 19 going back over his last five ball games. Curve in there to get it, or a changeup in there rather, to get it to 2 and 1 to Hayes. And now there goes Cruz. Hayes is swinging on the pitch, lifted into center field. This ball is going to be caught, and they're going to double off Cruz. He just kept on going, thinking that that one might get down, and he is doubled off. And, man, the Pirates just trying anything to get Key Brian Hayes going. They put on the hit and run. He flares one into center. And that is just not what they had drawn up on that one as it's going to be a double play and bring up Brian Reynolds with two down now and nobody on. Reynolds able to lay off, and that runs the count full. Nola winds up, and the payoff pitch is on the way, but outside. Good eye there to lay off the sinker running off the plate away and draws the two-out walk to bring Evan Milton to the plate here again with uh, two outs and Reynolds at first. He's got an opportunity to maybe drive in a run if he can find a gap. Takes a strike there on a nice changeup down and away to get it to 0 and 1. Now the pitch from Nola is fouled back. Man, he had a good rip at that one, but apparently just early on it. And the count quickly 0 and 2. That one's going to miss low, and one and two now to Milton. Reynolds has his lead. Nola kicks and fires, and got him to go outside of the zone there on a changeup down and away. It's been a big strike zone, though, so you can't really fault Milton for chasing that one. But he is going to be out to end the inning, and we go to the fourth with a 2-1 ball game here with Philly out in front. Muto really late on that curve, but able to foul it off and stay alive at 2-2. Two two. Now he's got a broken bat, pops it up on the infield. Milton over to grab that one, and that's the first out. Now it's Castellanos, 0-for-1. One. one of the streakiest hitters in all of baseball. That one is streaking towards the left field wall, and it's gone. First pitch swinging at a fastball up and in, turns on it, and just Sneaks that one out over the wall. The third home run of the game for the Phillies, and thankfully for the Pirates, at least they've all been solo shots, but they now lead by two on the 15th of the year for Nick Castellanos. Another good fastball, that one right on the corner, and he gets the call to get it back to two and two. And he goes to the changeup and had him out in front. Rolls over it, Cruz fields, and sends it across the diamond to get him for the second out. Change up off the plate, he lays off, and it's now 3-1. and one. 
And he tries to get corner again, just missing off the plate with all four of the balls in the at-bat, but it's a two-out walk for Yastrzemski to turn over the order as Patrick Wisdom will come to the plate now with two outs in the inning. Wisdom late on that fastball. 3-2, two, two out now. The runner will be on the move. And he takes a fastball at the belt for strike three, and that's going to end the inning. But Milton has needed 71 pitches to get through the first four innings, and the Pirates trail 3-1 to one after another solo shot from Nick Castellanos. That one misses low, and the count now full to Sawinski. The 3-2 pitch from Nola is off the plate away. It's a leadoff walk as the Pirates look to respond after the solo shot from Castellanos makes it a two-run lead, and now G-Man Choi steps in with a runner on and nobody out. Choi a little bit late to recognize the change up there, fouled it off, and it's 0-2. The pitch is hit hard, but right at Harrison. This is going to be a 4-6-3 double play, and the Pirates yet again get a leadoff man on, followed by a double play, and now it's two down for Connor Joe. There's no tempting there as he lays off the fastball inside to get it to one and two. Now a fastball lifted into right field, not hit very well. That's going to hang up and be caught, and the Pirates are down on just three batters there as we head to the fifth and it's 3-1 Philly. He's able to check his swing and now it makes it two and two. He struck out and then homered and now he gets another hanging slider. This time though he's late on it, still gonna serve it into right for a base hit to start the inning and he's got excellent speed so another good opportunity for Philadelphia here in the fifth. Milton checks on the runner there as the Pirates now have action in the bullpen. That one sliced down the right field line, and it's fair, but bounces off of the netting for an automatic double. Man, tough break there for the Pirates as this one hits the chalk, and then that's probably a good thing that that ended up going off the netting because with Turner's speed, he may have scored on that one. Actually landed just inside the line, as you can see there. It's now second and third, nobody out. Milton in trouble again here as it's Harper due up, and he's already at 77 pitches. First pitch to Harper is lifted into left center field. This ball hit it for the gap and extra bases for Harper. That's going to score two. Makes it five to one. The Phillies are just all over Evan Milton and the Pirates here in this one. And that may do it for the righty as he is just all kinds of struggling so far in this one. The Phillies are loving it as they lead by four. Runner in scoring position and still nobody out here in the inning. And that's it for Milton early exit for him as he just did not have it in this one struggling with command and the Phillies just jumping all over the mistakes that he was making and his day is done after just four plus innings possibly his worst start of the season as the Pirates are in trouble they're going to turn to Johan Oviedo for some long relief here as he comes in with a runner on second nobody out in the fifth Pirates down by four and he's got his work cut out for him all right, so nobody out, runner on second, and Schwarber at the plate. Fly out, strike out, come on. Dang it, he doubles, and that's credited to Milton as well. So close the book on him. Eight hits over four plus and six earned, as he just didn't have it today. And now it's just getting away from us. Three straight hits after he got those first two outs. Let's at least, you know, battle in this one. Come on, guys. Single. Milton just having an awful day. There you go. G-Man Choi makes it a four-run game. Grand Slam can tie it. You never know. But Nick Costianos is just killing us. Him and Harper. Can't get either of them out. Hey, Key Brian Hayes actually got a hit. Um, let's. All right, so he got me through the eighth at least. Uh, Soto into the game. 0 for 4 for Milton today. Just pretty much all around an awful game. Now into Good day um, for Reynolds at the plate, two for three. But other than that, really nobody on our offense doing anything. But look at all the hits that these guys have stacked up. 
three hits among the first three guys in the lineup and then some more stacked up down at the bottom. Uh, let's go with Perdomo You're here, I guess, please. to try and finish things off. You've got to be kidding me! Harper just raked against us today. The batter number 14. Another double for Hayes. We really need to get him hit. But this was just an ugly game in general. We never really got much going offensively. Um, look at all the homers, though. One for Turner, two for Castellanos. Harrison hits one, and he never hits them. And then Harper with his 25th. They had 14 hits. Jeez. Just terrible. Milton 0 for 4 with a strikeout and then just got torched on the on the hill. Eight hits and a walk. Six earned. His third loss of the season. Struck out six. So he's going to need a bounce back start in the next one. Let's go ahead and bounce back to the main screen. And I think I might need to adjust my rotation at the AAA level because we sold, sold. We traded Ortiz um, and didn't really backfill with a long relief option. We gave um, the demotion to Garcia, who doesn't fill that void. So I need to figure out what I want to do here. Do any of these guys have decent stamina? No. So I think I'm going to send Hernandez down to double A and call up somebody who can give us some innings. So let's come down here. Where is he? Okay, there he is. Hernandez goes down to double A. Um, and we'll send San Diego down to single A. Do I need to do that, though? I think I sort of do. Cruz, you can come up to double A. And now, let's go. Burroughs is pitching pretty well at double A. Let's call him up to triple A and see how he does. So that should fix the rosters. We'll do that. Burroughs will now be the long relief guy there. I think that's fair. And then here, I don't think I really need to do anything. I should probably call up Quinn Priester to triple A, but I want to wait until he's not cold. I don't want to call him up when he's been struggling. So, uh, Garcia, how's Smith been doing? Yeah, we'll just leave that the way it is. No big deal. All right. So that's that. Now we advance, and we actually have a day off here, I believe. Smith and Jigba is no longer injured, and the Marlins are now offering us another trade. They want to give us another reliever, but I don't want JT Chagua that bad, so we're going to skip on that one. I'm not giving up another middle infielder. Um... Let's go look at the lineups here, or the, uh, yeah, I need to do something with Smith and Jigba. So, Belade has been hitting well. Let's just move him down to double A. And then at double A, Hudson Head has been atrocious. He goes back down to single A. That should solve the roster issues. Now we need to make some lineup adjustments. I want Smith and Jigba in the lineup. He is one of my best prospects down here. Even against lefties, I think I want him in there. Um, although, Gorski, 46-48. Smith and Jigba is probably the best of these three, even against lefties. So, he's going to play every day. Uh, and then down here... I think Belade kind of earned it the way he was playing at double A. Fabricio's hitting okay. Young, me. Eh. Palacios has not been good, so Sanchez has, but not a ton of at bats. 
he can't play center field, so Sanchez it is. All right. Now that all that's done, let's... Oh, so today is the trade deadline. I don't think we're going to be doing any more moves here, though. Like, we made our move. If somebody makes us an offer, we'll entertain it. Ryan Helsley is going from the Cardinals to the Blue Jays. So the Cardinals are sellers at the deadline. So they're sort of in rebuild mode. They are getting a young starter in Ricky Tiedemann and a young left fielder in Gabriel Martinez. So remember, they traded away... Um, who was it? Jordan Walker and uh, Adam Wainwright to get... Who was it that they got? can't remember. And now... They're trading away their closer, so I'm kind of confused about their tactics here as they were buyers in the one scenario and sellers in the other. The Astros are wanting to make a trade. I don't think we're going to be doing any more trades, though. Like I, Velasquez is a starter right now. I'm not giving him up for a reliever, so that's a pass, and that's probably the only offer we're going to get. It's the deadline to... to uh, Oh, I forgot about this. Quinn Priester, rough month. Sanchez swinging it well. Maggi swinging it well. Holderman doing well. Dombrowski doing well. Um, so I at least want to look at Milton and just make sure he's not regressing in any of these categories. Like his contact against lefties, we're going to go fix that for now. Uh, until he is starting to age a little bit. I don't want any of his attribute attributes to regress, so kind of just leaving those where they are. Um, I don't think I really need to do anything else there. Uh, we don't need to do anything with draft pick signings, so we're good there. And let's head out to Pittsburgh. I think this is a two, yeah, two-game series against the Tigers. Uh, at home, they are terrible. We've got to start winning. Thankfully, the Brewers have cooled off a little bit. But we're four games back, and uh, this is a big two-game set at home against the Tigers. All right, so a nice win in this one. Uh, pretty comfortable throughout, really. We went at 6-1, to one, held them to 10 hits and a walk, but we kind of spread them out for the most part. Struck out 8. Our hits were kind of scattered as well, but we managed to come up with some big hits when we needed them. Nice day for uh, Milton going two for three, also a walk, scored a couple runs, stole a base, drove one in. Uh, Connor Joe, two for three, hit a two-run dinger. He had a pretty good day. Um, we made a bunch of substitutions late in this one. Contreras, six innings, seven hits and a walk, one run, and it was unearned, and he gets win number eight on the year. Uh, Chase DeYoung did a good job. Good effort from the uh, the new acquisition there, getting the hold in the eighth, um, or I guess across the seventh and eighth. And then uh, Underwood finished things off with an inning and a third, two hits. So nice win for the Pirates and much needed as let's see what the Brewers did. They also won. So we didn't make up any ground, but we didn't lose any ground. And now we got Mitch Keller against Spencer Turnbull, who has been struggling. And Keller pitching fairly well over the last several weeks. So let's see if he can keep it going. Oh, what a win in this one. The Pirates just, or just go on fire in the ninth and score four to come from a 8-5 deficit, roaring back to win. What a ball game. Uh, we'll take a look at the box score. Uh, we gave up 13 hits and four walks. Our pitching was obviously not very good in this one, but the offense came through. Uh, Cruz was 0 for 4. Didn't really help us much in this one, but Hayes, a couple more hits as we look to get him on track. Three-hit day for Milton. A bunch of guys after him with two hits apiece and a bunch of RBIs as a result right in that stretch. Uh, we end up with 15 hits, four walks. We didn't hit any home runs. Mitch Keller was not very good in this one. Four innings, eight hits and a walk, four earned. And then Jalen Beeks came in and got shelled. And now we find ourselves down big. I bring in Brubaker, and he holds it together, giving up just one run over four and a third, and he gets the win. 
uh, kind of deservedly so. But a four-run rally in the fourth to win it. What a comeback and a huge win as we pick up this, to the two-game sweep. And now we also gain a game on the Brewers and are about to you know, head to Milwaukee for a massive four-game stretch here. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, we come into the series down three games. If we win the series, um, it would at least give us two games back. If we split, I'd be okay with that considering it's all on the road. Uh, but nonetheless, a massive four-game stretch coming up against Milwaukee, starting with Velasquez against Jansen Junk, who we shelled the last time we saw him. All right, a big come-from-behind win for the Pirates in game one of the series. Jack Sawinski, a huge game for us. Velasquez was pretty good in this one. Um, we'll see more on that shortly. But look at this, two hits for Cruz, Hayes, Milton, three for Sawinski, including three driven in, mainly because those guys in front of him doing a good job getting on base. And I mean, even Reynolds had a hit and two walks. So we had lots of traffic on the bases. And then G-Man Choi also with a couple of hits and drove in a run. Nobody at the bottom of the lineup did much, but we got it done. 13 hits, seven walks, six strikeouts and just enough to get the win in this one. Velasquez, as you can see there, pretty gritty performance going six innings, giving up seven hits and three walks, three earned runs all in one inning, um, and was really good outside of that. So really happy with what we got out of him. Uh, A.J. Puck comes in, gives up a hit and a walk, but no runs. Good job by Chase DeYoung going in inning in a third. Uh, nobody reached base against him, and then Bednar, a little bit nerve-wracking there in the ninth, giving up a hit and a walk, but he gets save number 30, and we pick up the win in the first game of the series. Now, game two, as we're down two games, or, or you know, or two games back in the uh, in the standings, is Corbin Burns against Evan Milton. So this is going to be a big one, um, and Milton looking for a bounce-back start for win number 19 of the year if he can get it. So let's head out to Milwaukee for game two of the series. And here we are in Milwaukee for a huge game two in this series with the Pirates trying to uh, catch the Brewers in the National League Central. The, uh, the Brewers are at home and have Corbin Burns going to the mound for them, so they look to even the score in the series. As you see the, cent the central standings here, they've got the two-game edge. Cincinnati now seven and a half back. The, the Cardinals eight and a half back, and the Cubs nowhere close. You need to look at the numbers for Corbin Burns making his 23rd start. He's 10 and seven, a very respectable 2.63 ERA, a 1.06 WHIP for the uh, one-time Cy Young winner back in 2021. And O'Neill Cruz stands in as we look to get underway here in Milwaukee. Cruz, a big swing and a miss there on the hanging slider, and that evens the count at two and, a, and two. And now he goes upstairs with a slider, hit hard, knocked down at third, recovers, throws, and gets him by a half step for the first out of the inning. Cutter missing way inside. It's now three and one to Reynolds. Important pitch coming here is you don't want to walk them, and they do. So a runner on now for Evan Milton. Pirates, a couple of hard hit balls with nothing to show for it, but now Reynolds on with two down. Evan Milton stands in, has the average up to 315 now on the season, and takes a changeup just off the corner. That's a couple on the outside edge where uh, Burns has not gotten the call. As you see, the uh, league leaders in doubles with Milton sitting in the second spot there, just one back of Xander Bogarts with 34. And another one here could give the Pirates their lead with Reynolds at first and two down. Kicks and delivers, hangs a curve, but Milton is taking, and it's in for strike one. One and one now. The pitch is grounded to the left side. He goes to second for the final out of the inning, and Milton may have helped him there. Not a great pitch to hit. It was down and away with the off speed, and that's going to do it for the Pirates. We go to the bottom of the first with no score. We'll get a look at the numbers for Milton coming off of his perhaps worst start of the season. He is 18-3 and three on the year. The whip still south of one. Um, 
2.25 ERA across 27 starts, and he's got 192 strikeouts. So we're on milestone watch as he approaches 200 in that category, and Christian Yelich will start things off for the Brewers. Yelich late on that fastball on the inside corner, and it's one and two. He goes to a fastball again, this time up and in, and got him swinging for a four-pitch strikeout to start the ball game. Mitchell lays off the curve in the dirt, and it's now one and two. He goes to the fastball up, lifted into left field. Sawinski is there to retire that one, and that's two down. And let's look at the Brewers lineup, as it was Yelich to lead off, followed by Mitchell. Arias hitting 294 on the season, then Contreras and Voigt in the four and five hole. Willie Adamas batting sixth. Rowdy Telez still struggling with the average at 193. Then it's Urias and Taylor to round out the lineup. Missed outside with the changeup. It's now three and one to Arias. Miss is low, and that is ball four. And a base runner here with two out in the inning. Troy, a nice effort there, but just couldn't reach that foul ball, and the, the uh, inning stays alive as it's 0-1 to Contreras. Hanging curve, that one smoked up the middle, almost hit Milton, but it's into center field for a two-out single, and we saw that last inning, Milton making a lot of mistakes over the heart of the plate, and there's another. It balls squared up at 106 miles an hour exit velo, and that brings up Luke Voigt with two down. Front hip slider there, kind of fooled Voigt, and the count moves to 0 and 2. Milton, pitch in the dirt, gets away from Rodriguez. The throw down to third is not in time, and that'll move two runners into scoring position here as it goes down as a wild pitch. And you got to feel for Milton, an 0 2 curve in the dirt is a pitch that your catcher should be able to handle, but that one just slips underneath of uh, Rodriguez and puts two runners into scoring position. 0-2, oh or 1-2 now to Luke Voigt. Milton fires in a fastball and blew it by him at 96 to get him to end the inning. So Milton escapes some danger here, and the, the uh, score is tied at zero after one. Choi fouls that one off, and the count stays 1-2. and two. Burns kicks and fires. Swing and a miss on a slider that was right down the middle, but Choi just swings through it and is down on strikes for the second out. Joe a little bit late on that one, fouls it off, and it's quickly 0-2. Pitch from Burns is hit hard to the left side, diving try, but that is going to go down as an infield single as it's off his glove. Joe extends the inning with a two-out knock, and that brings Tucapita Marcano to the plate with one on. There's a cutter in for strike one to even the count as Joe leads off a first. Need a ball in the gap here to try and score that runner. And that ball is hit down the right field line. Could get into the corner. So this has a chance to score that runner all the way from first. Here comes the throw. It is going to be relayed to the plate, and it is going to be in time to get Connor Joe to end the inning. Can't fault the Pirates for sending him there, but a perfect relay is in time to nail him, and that is going to keep us scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second. Adamas foul tip there on the 3-2 pitch, but Rodriguez could not squeeze it, and he stays alive. Now he chases one in the dirt. This time Rodriguez gloves it and has to send it down to Choi, but that is going to be the first out of the inning. Telez has pretty good power, and ahead in the count now 2-0. This is a pretty important pitch here. You don't want to give him too, something too good to hit. That one is hit hard up the middle as he couldn't get it elevated, and it's a good thing as 111 exit below. It wouldn't have taken much elevation to get that one out of here, and he is on with a one-out single. Darius lays off the curve in the dirt, and it goes to one and two. Then he goes to a fastball that he goes around on, even though it hits him, and he is down on strikes. It's a dead ball as Telez will have to hold it first, and it's now two down for Tyrone Taylor. Good take there as the two seam misses just low and it's one and one. Milton goes to the curve and that ball is sliced into the right center field gap. Connor Joe gonna try and cut it off but can't get to it. It goes all the way to the wall. Telez does not run very well but he is gonna come all the way around from first and will score to give the Brewers the lead. Man, it looked like that ball wasn't hit very hard. Surprising that nobody was able to get to it and cut it off as it's just perfectly placed. Not a terrible pitch on the outside part, but up a little bit. Great piece of hitting, and that is gonna give Milwaukee the early lead in this one. 
Yelich tried to get him a chase again. It misses low, and it's now full at three and two. Payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. That'll strand the runner at third. The RBI triple from Tyrone Taylor gives the Brewers the lead, and it's one nothing as we head to the third. Cruz just late on the fastball, fouls it off, and the count moves to three and two. Hit the ball hard his first time up, but unfortunately nothing to show for it. This time, he laces one down the left field line. That is fair and headed for the corner. This will be a stand-up double with one out here in the inning. The runners have a, a man in scoring position and looking to try and tie this thing up. Good take there on the cutter that misses just high, and that evens the count at one apiece to Cruz, or to Hayes. He hits this ball hard, deep to right field. Long run, but he's going to, no, he's not going to get there. And it bounces over the wall for a ground rule double. Man, it looked like he was going to make that catch, but instead it's going to go down as a double that scores the runner from second. And that is huge because uh, Cruz was kind of tagging there. Not sure if he would have been able to score if that ball is caught. He would have been tagging, heading for third for sure, but obviously not going to score on a play like that. Reynolds watches that one miss just low, and it's now one and one to the Pirates center fielder. That ball hit hard back up the middle and into center field. They're going to send Hayes. Here comes the throw to the plate. It is going to be offline. The run comes in to score. Reynolds will advance to second on the throw to the plate, and it's two to one Pirates after the RBI single. And that's going to bring Evan Milton to the plate. Huge opportunity here for the Pirates with another runner in scoring position and your best hitter at the plate. Corbin Burns at 49 pitches already, and that one catches the inside corner for strike one. Milton takes the fastball, now maybe sitting on something off speed. Burns kicks and fires, and he does go to the curve, and Milton swings over top of it and a little bit early, and he's quickly behind 0-2. Now the 0-2 pitch almost hits him with the curve. Obviously able to lay off of that one and the count now one and two. Burns checks on Reynolds and now delivers and that ball is torched up the middle. Reynolds is gonna round third. He's gonna head for home. They're gonna make the same mistake twice in a row as the throw is offline. Reynolds in to score. Milton moves to second on the throw to the plate and it's now three to one as he trades places with Brian Reynolds. And that's going to bring Jack Sawinski to the plate. Still runner in scoring position and just one out in the inning. Sawinski just missed the cutter there. Fouls it back and it's one and two. Sitting on 14 home runs so far this season. Swing and a miss as he's down on strikes. Swings over top of that changeup. And that's a big second out as Burns registers the strikeout and brings up G-Man Choi with two down. Choi just helping him out here as he's got him 2-0 and oh and then swings at two pitches just out of the zone to get to 2-2. Two and two. And now a slider up and in jammed him. This one has popped up, and that's not going to do it as that's the final out of the inning. But the Pirates respond in their half of the third as they get three to grab the lead. We'll go to the bottom of the inning. It's Mitchell, Arias, and Contreras due up for Milwaukee. That's a heck of a take from Mitchell right there and gets it to 3-1. and one. Flew out to left his first time up and doesn't get the call there. Mitchell, look, or, or Milton thought he had strike two. Not sure where that one missed, but it's a leadoff walk, and this is big as it's now the heart of the order due up for the Brewers with a runner on and nobody out. Mitchell has elite speed. He's not a huge stolen base guy, but obviously have to worry about him over there. And that ball grounded up the middle, actually a soft liner. Thought it might bounce, but it hangs up. Marcano makes the grab, and that's the first out of the inning. Fastball missed inside. It's now 2-2 two and two to Contreras. He's grounded into 11 double plays this year. The Pirates could use another. He hits that one hard and on the ground, and it's going to get through into left field for a one-out single to make it first and second. Boyd late on that slider, sliced it foul down the right field line. The count stays two and two, and now the fastball is by him at 96 miles an hour, and he's down on strikes for a huge second out. Slider missing up and away, certainly not where Milton wanted it, but at least the mistake misses out of the zone. It's now one and one. That ball lines the right side. Choi knocks it down. Milton over to cover, and they're going to get him to get out of the inning. But Milton's over 60 pitches already through just three innings, but the Pirates do have the lead as it's three to one as we've finished three here in Milwaukee.
That cutter catches the outside corner. It's now two and one to Rodriguez. Burns at 72 pitches himself already. He's going to get out of the inning here, one, two, three, as that one's popped up on the infield. Luke Boyd has it. But we're going to see some bullpen action in this one as both pitchers laboring through these first few innings. We're going to the bottom of the fourth. It's 3-1 Pirates. And the bottom of the order due up for Milwaukee. It'll be Rowdy Telez to start things off. He is one for one in this one. And first pitch swing and hits a ground ball to Marcano. And that's one pitch, one out to start the inning. Luis Urias now. He's 0 for 1. First pitch to him. He's swinging. Ground ball to third. Hayes has it. Sends it across the diamond. And that's two pitches, two outs. And that's just what the doctor ordered for uh, Evan Milton as he could really use a quick inning here. Taylor lays off another and works it all the way back to a full count. Good at bat here. Swing and a miss. He got him swinging on the inside corner to end the inning. And Milton gets that quick inning that he needed as it took just eight pitches. And he sets them down in order. We're going to the fifth, and it's 3-1 Pittsburgh. Burns fires a strike there, and it's 0-1 to Reynolds, who is 1-1 one for one with a walk and a single so far. And now he hits one deep to center field, but he just missed it. That's going to hang up and be caught to end the inning. So Burns sets him down in order, and will go to the bottom of the fifth with the top of the order due up, and the Pirates still leading 3-1. That time, Yelich able to lay off. It misses outside, and it's now one and two. Milton throws a fastball in the outside corner. Popped up in foul territory. Rodriguez is under it and has it for the first out. Milton went upstairs trying to get him to chase, and that's three in a row out of the zone, and he's worked it all the way back to a full count. And he goes to the changeup, checked his swing, and he held up, did not go, and a great job by Mitchell. He falls behind 0-2, watched a couple of close ones, and then lays off another tough one there to draw the, lead, the uh, one-out walk. And that brings up Luis Arias, former Marlin. Uh, as both of these teams in the NL Central made trades with uh, Miami to uh, try and bolster their playoff hopes. That one just missing outside, and it's 1-0. Mitchell has great speed. There he goes. The pitch catches the outside corner. Actually, they roll it a ball. And the throw down to second is perfect as it skips in there. Cruz able to put the tag down and just barely nab him as they get him stealing. And this was just a fantastic throw. Wasn't the greatest jump, but you see there, the throw kind of bounced and took Cruz's glove right into the tag as he you know, scooped it. And that's a huge second out. You can see there, that pitch looked pretty good, but he calls it a ball, it's still 2-0. And that one is in the center field. Should be a can of corn for Reynolds. Looks like he's under it, and that'll do it for Milwaukee in the fifth as it is going to be 3-1 Pirates as we head to the sixth. Aaron Ashby is going to be coming on for Milwaukee here, making his 38th appearance of the year. The veteran lefty is 5-5 five five with a 3.32 ERA and 40 and two-thirds innings of work so far. It'll be Evan Milton to face him first, and before we uh, get a look at the at-bat, let's get a look at Ashby's pitch mix here as it's a 95-mile-an-hour sinker. He throws a slider, change-up, uh, overhand curve, and a four-seam um, that tops out in the uh, mid to high 90s. So Milton, one for two so far in this one, batting from the right-handed side in this one. And that one catches the outside corner for a strike to get it to 0 and 1. Ashby winds and oh, that's a slider down and in that Milton just could not lay off, and he is quickly behind 0 and 2. So you had Burns, the starter, who pitched from the stretch, and then you go to a reliever in Ashby who uses the windup, which is you know usually the reverse of what you see. Milton a little bit late on that sinker, but got a piece, fouls it off. Yeah, that one was hittable, though. And then he chases a curve in the dirt, and Contreras will send that down. No, he pulls him off the bag, and it's going to be a strikeout followed by an E2, and Milton is on to lead off the inning. Man, I mean, this pitch was nowhere close, but good hustle by Milton. He's, you know, moving out of the box. The throw pulls Voigt, and they've got a man on to start this thing off. That's now three straight sliders from Ashby. And that one misses, and it's now two and one to the pinch hitter McCutcheon. 
Then he leaves a sinker right down the middle. That ball into the gap in right center field. That's going to get all the way to the wall. Milton will come around to score, and it's going to be an RBI double for Andrew McCutcheon as he comes off the bench to increase the lead to three. It's now four to one Pirates. That one was hittable there, but he was just a little bit late on that changeup. Fouls it off, and it's now one and two. And he tried to check his swing, but it definitely got around on that one, and he is down on strikes for the first out. And we're going to see one more pinch hitter in the inning as it's uh, Rodolfo Castro coming on. The OPS at 631. He's got some pop, but the average hasn't been where they want it as it's down at just 225. And they're actually going to put him on intentionally, and that will bring Andy Rodriguez to the plate with two down and runners on first and second. That one just misses outside. It's now two and one to Rodriguez, who hits for pretty good average. So it's kind of interesting with a runner in scoring position that they would walk Castro to just avoid his power. And that ball is hit deep to left center field, and that's gone. So it totally backfires as you pitch around the supposed power of Rodolfo Castro, and Andy Rodriguez makes him regret it as he hits that one 391 feet for his fourth of the year. A three-run shot, and the Pirates extend the lead. All of those runs going down unearned after the uh, the strikeout and error that uh, Milton had reached on. So they should have been out of the inning, and instead it's a massive turn of events here, and they're going to have to go to the bullpen yet again as Adrian Hauser will come on to make his 30th appearance of the year and pretty much just trying to eat up some innings now as they trail by six. Cruz hit that ball about as hard as you can hit one, but he pulled it foul, and the count moves to one and two. And he chases a, a sinker down out of the zone, but barrels it up and pulls it through the right side for a two-out single. Hayes just a hair late on that one, fouls it back and stays alive as it's still 0-2. Cruz has his lead at first, and that pitch hit pretty well into right field, but it's going to be caught to end the inning, but not before the Tiger or the Pirates add four runs to make it 7-1 to one as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Good take by Contreras there as that moves the count to 1-2. and two. Pitch number 89 on the way for Milton, and it's chopped third. Hayes charges, fields, takes his time, and throws across the diamond to get him for the first out. Boyd out in front of a fastball swinging on the first pitch, and Milton winds and fires on the 0-1 count, and he's now late on a changeup and hits it through the vacated hole due to the shift for a one-out single. And that is going to do it for Evan Milton. They are going to turn to the bullpen as his day is over, just over 90 pitches, and has put himself in a position to pick up yet another victory as he exits, and Johan Oviedo is going to join the fray here with a six-run lead and a runner on first, and he's making his 29th appearance of the year, 62 innings of work, and he's put together a respectable resume with a 2-3 and three record and a 3.92 ERA. All right, so Oviedo in with a six-run lead. We're kind of hoping that he can give us a little bit of length here, but we'll uh, closely monitor this because we don't want this game getting away from us. Single, fly out. Drives in the run, and that's credited to Milton to close the book on him. What, I guess five and a third. Five hits, two earned. All right, so we got out of it. Um, okay, so that's through the seventh. There we go. All right, running away with it. Let's go ahead and make some defensive substitutions here. Get some guys some rest. Here we go. Milton a double. He's two for five on the day. All right, 10-2, convincing victory here, uh, and a big one. Fell behind, immediately responded, and then turned it on in the sixth and kept the pedal down for a 10-2 victory. Milton, I believe, now has 199 strikeouts on the season. He ends up going five and a third, five hits, three walks. Kind of interesting. Struck out seven. Uh, the walks really were a result of just really good patience at the plate by the Brewers. 
Um, the three-run homer from Andy Rodriguez was absolutely massive. That kind of opened it up and made it comfortable the rest of the way. That was the biggest hit of the game. And Kevron Hayes actually gets player of the game honors going two for five with a couple of extra base hits, but still looking for his first homer of the season. And we are in August, y'all. This is just getting crazy. We'll see if he can go an entire season without a single home run and pretty much as an everyday starter. So it's just pretty wild. All right, so now it's going to be uh, Ronzi Contreras against Freddy Peralta. If we can get the win here, we draw even in the division and really put the pressure on them as we would be looking at a four-game sweep on the road. So let's see if we can get the win in game three of the series. Well, this was sort of a statement game for them. They put up six runs in the second inning and end up beating a 7-1. We only got four hits as a team. We were just never in this one. Uh, one of those four hits was for Milton. We gave Hayes the day off, and Castro 0 for 2, couple of walks, and scored our only run. Um, Sawinski hit a sacrifice fly. And, you know, there was a stretch where we got some walks and a couple of hits and threatened, but just couldn't come up with the big hit. And then we just fell apart and really never got anything going down the stretch. Contreras was just awful in this one. Seven hits and two walks over two and two-thirds. Just a disastrous second inning. And I tried to leave him in to see if he could put together, you know, some sort of, you know, grind out four or five inning kind of start. And that just wasn't going to happen. Brubaker does a good job. Perdomo does a good job. But it didn't really matter because it was all garbage time. So it'll come down to the last game of the series to see if we can pick up the series win which would still put us within a game. So this is a big one here between Keller and Woodruff. We need Keller to go out there and have a good game, not like an okay game like he just seems to always have. It's, it's usually either okay or really bad. And I don't think we can afford either in this one if we're going to pick up this win. So cross your fingers and we'll see what happens. Well, you know, Keller, as usual, was kind of just okay, but it didn't matter because our offense was atrocious yet again. Just five hits, three walks. We get shut out, struck out ten times. G-Man Choi killed us. He had a couple of chances with traffic on the bases and just kept striking out. Um, Reynolds hit into a big double play at one point when we had something going. We just, you know, just couldn't get it going offensively. Keller, you see there, four and a third. One of the runs was unearned, and the numbers are inflated a little bit in terms of hits and walks because the the traffic that they had on the bases got compounded by that error, and they ended up getting a few more hits, and that's the inning where they kind of got us in trouble. And then the bullpen did a really good job down the stretch, but it, again, didn't matter as that one inning in the fifth was all that the – Brewers needed to take us down and they come back to split the series and that one kind of stings but you know you split a series on the road you're you're okay with that in fact if anything I call that a series win um, but you know we find ourselves still down by three games in the division um, and we've got the Braves coming up so this is not a you know an easy four game stretch right here either so we've got to get something done here. If we can take three out of four from the Braves would be absolutely massive. But this first one here with Velasquez versus Max Freed is a big one. We got a heck of a start from Vince Velasquez in this one as he pitched all the way into the eighth inning without giving up a run. Definitely gets player of the game honors as we win this one in a pretty low scoring affair, just three to one. As a team, the Braves only mustered five hits and two walks and struck out eight times. And how about Acuna going 0 for 4 with a hat trick? Brian Reynolds, good day, going 3 for 4. Key Brian Hayes, that average starting to tick up a little bit as he goes 2 for 4. Uh, still looking for that first home run of the year. Uh, Sawinski, or uh, sorry, Milton goes 1 for 4 with an RBI and a double. And then, you know, we talked about what Velazquez did. How about three hits and a walk over seven and two thirds? He gave up a solo home run. 
got another out, and then I pulled him with two outs in the seventh. And then Puck actually struggled a little bit with those two outs in the seventh as he needed three batters to get the final out of that inning, and then Bednar gave up a hit in the ninth, but that was it. He gets save number 31, and we get a big win against the Braves. The Brewers also won, so we're still three games back, but that gives us the edge in the series, and that's going to do it for this episode. The next ball game that we see is going to be Evan Milton looking for his 20th win of the year. Uh, against Kyle Wright in Pittsburgh against the Braves. But if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment below, and we will see you all next time. Good evening, friends and neighbors. Or shall I say this afternoon?